Hello, my friends. You're in for a real treat today. Today, I'm doing a roundtable discussion on the topic of delegating, which I'm very excited to do. This is going to be part of a new series I'm doing, which are a series of roundtable discussions with some of our Unicorn Society members on specific topics. And today's topic is delegating. Joining me for today's conversation is Megan Hanna of Heat Studios, co-owner, co I should say, of Heat Studios, and Chris Perry, who is the owner of Velocity Sports Performance. And, um, and it's a fantastic conversation because we do a deep dive into delegating. We start by talking a little bit about our fails, all the things we've done wrong when it comes to delegating over the years. And we then we go into sharing some of our best practices for delegating to in-person team members, to virtual assistants, how to create SOPs, how to get out of our own way to delegating and let go of tasks. Um, it's a fantastic conversation. So get your pen and paper ready. And if you struggle with delegating or know you need to do more of it, today is the podcast episode for you. Let's dive in. Business for Unicorns podcast is for fitness business owners who want actionable strategies to grow their business, take amazing care of their clients, and build a life and business they truly love. I'm your host, Michael Keeler, co-founder of Mark Fisher Fitness, and through Business for Unicorns, I'm a coach and consultant to industry-leading fitness studios around the world. Let's get started. Hello, fitness business nerds. Welcome to another episode of the Business for Unicorns podcast. I'm here with a very special episode today because we're doing something that I've never done before, which is um, having a conversation with multiple people two friends, and very specifically, two friends from our Unicorn Society group. You've heard Mark and Pete and I talk about our Unicorn Society group probably several times in this podcast. And what I decided to do is uh, is do a little um, podcast series where I interview people who are in our Unicorn Society group who are fitness business owners, like many of you listening, and we picked some specific topics that we want to talk about with some of the Unicorn Society members. So today, I'm very excited to talk to Chris and Megan, who you just heard about and heard their bios. And the topic we're talking about today is definitely delegating, which I'm so thrilled about because I think this is such a key key skill to develop as a leader of a small business or as an entrepreneur. Uh, because, you know, you're often the bottleneck to the growth in your business is you as the owner. So the better you get at delegating things off your plate, the faster often the business can grow. And um, Megan and Chris are going about to share with us, I'm sure, lots of pitfalls and things we've all done wrong <laughs> and some best practices and things we've learned along the way. So without further ado, let me welcome to the stage. Here we go. Chris and Megan, what's up? Welcome. Hi. Hi. Hi, thank you so much for doing this. This is so fun. Uh, it's, you know, I, I've only had multiple conversations on here with uh, Pete and Mark, but to have some fresh faces on here uh, and fresh voices on the podcast is really excited. So thank you for agreeing to do this. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I know you're both busy. Um, so um, let's, before we get started, I've already given you kind of official bio so everyone knows who the heck you are, but I'd just love to hear from each of you, just like, you know, just a little bit about um, your business, where you are, what you do. Let's start with you, Megan. Tell us about Heat Studios. Hey everybody, um, I'm Megan. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. We have a training gym. We focus mainly on group fitness. We do some personal training and some small group too. Um, big focus on strength training with some hit and some conditioning in there too. And I'll go ahead and tell everybody that the only reason I know anything about business is because of Michael and business <laughs> unicorns. <laughs> Amazing. I promise we're not paying her to say that. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, Megan. That's great. Uh, and for those of you who are ever in, you know, in South Carolina, go, go hit them North up. North Carolina. Go, no, I'm sorry, North Carolina. I always yeah. do that with the Carolinas. So in North Carolina, go visit. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks, Megan. What about you, Chris? Tell us about Velocity. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Chris Perry. I'm the owner of Velocity Sports Performance in Nord, which is a little bit southwest of Boston. Um, we have a little bit of a unique business. We uh, do sports performance for youth. So we uh, deal with middle school, high school, and college age athletes, as well as about half our business is general population adults, which we train in both a kind of group setting and a semi-private setting. Yeah, amazing. Uh, I know I didn't say I was going to ask you this, but I'm, I'm curious. Remind me, how long have you both been in Unicorn Society? Megan, how long have you been in? Since 2019. Oh yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's getting there. How about you, Chris? Uh, since the beginning, whatever that was. When was yeah. the first one? I want to say it was twenty sixteen. Sixteen, yeah. yeah does that right. sound right? 
Yep. Wow. It's been, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I'm excited to do this, friends. Let's start with this. So the topic today is delegating, and you knew this coming in. And, um, and what I want to start with, just because I think it'd be fun, is talk about all the ways we've failed trying to delegate, right? <laughs> all the ways we've screwed it up. Because frankly, there are lots of ways to delegate poorly. And I just want to, you know, have this conversation for our listeners just to one, normalize the idea that this is like a learned skill you have to do to get better at <laughs> and normalize the idea you're going to fail the first few times. And maybe we can share some pitfalls that they can try to avoid. So, I mean, who wants to get the ball rolling with some delegating fails? <laughs> I will. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Megan. <clears throat> I would, I would say the first epic fail is to just not delegate at all. Mm. which is something that I, I still struggle with. But um, yeah, just trying to do it all yourself is number one, the worst thing I've done. And then um, I think my second pitfall is delegating, trying to delegate without a plan. Mm. So at least, you know, acknowledging that I needed help, but not knowing the exact kind of help I needed. And then when I had the help, just not really being able to properly convey what I wanted out of that person, which sort of a recipe for disaster. Yeah, totally. I'd love you to just talk a little bit more about the first one. So when we just don't delegate at all, can you just talk about some of the reasons why you didn't? Because I feel like that there's a lot of like really understandable reasons why people just avoid okay. trying to delegate. What were some of yours? Yeah, well, number one, I think is because um, you think no one can do it as well as you. Right? <laughs> yep, the most Obviously. common one we hear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and number two is... Um, it's, it's hard because it takes a lot of work up front to get it all together. Um, it's like one of those, it's just like anything where it's a lot of work up front and we want to avoid that a lot of times. But yeah. if you put in that time and effort, um, it's worth it in the end. But yeah, trying to avoid, you know, feeling like you don't have time to get it all together is probably the second one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that, the first one I think is so relevant because it was something we were talking about in a group Unicorn Society call recently is the idea that we think that we're like a 10 out of 10 at doing everything in our business. Our, you know, our, our fellow Unicorn Society member, Ben Pickert was saying this, that like, you know, that we always assume that we're a 10 out of 10, that we, we can do it best. But like, what if we're a seven? Right, like what? What if when we delegate this to someone, they'll do it better than us eventually? Maybe not at first, but eventually they'll be a ten out of ten. And like, I think that's a useful mindset when you're stuck and not wanting to delegate. Yeah, thanks, Megan. Oh, yeah. What about yeah? What about you? What about you, Chris? What are your What are your fails? Yeah, I think uh, along Megan's line, you know, I view kind of delegation as like on a continuum. You kind of start with, as Megan's mentioned, is like, well, we can't. I got to do it all. And it starts with, as a small business owner, you do it all at the beginning. Yep. There's nobody to delegate it to. So you start there, you get used to how you do it. Um, and you get in that mindset is like, well, no one could do it as good as you. Mm -hmm. And so you just keep doing it. Yep. Um, then when you come to the realization that I have to move on the continuum, um, then it's like, okay, it's kind of in the short term. The reality is it takes you longer in the short term to train somebody then it is to just do it yourself. So as we get busy as a small business owner with a lot of things coming at you, to carve out the time to be quiet and map it out, most of the time we default to, let me just do it. Mm -hmm. We just do it, it's quick, we just keep going and you just kind of get in this kind of rat's uh, wheel of just kind of going over and over and over again. I think, and then I think if you get to the point where you do actually do delegate to Megan's point is like you probably don't have a good plan and you probably don't ever really delegate it. You kind of half delegate it. You know, I find myself in the past, even now, I, I'll step in if it's not going exactly the way I want it to. And that's not delegation. If I'm in there helping him, stepping in, and then the people that you delegate to just kind of back off and say, well, he's going to do it anyway. Yep. So those are kind of my biggest kind of issues. Yeah. No, I think that's, that's really smart because I think that last phase is where people often get stuck. It's like, well, I told them to do it, but then they did it wrong. So then I had to go do it again. And then you're just back in it again. And then they don't feel like they ever have to learn. <laughs> and they know you're going to come in and kind of save the day. And you jumping back in just sends the message loud and clear. Like, you suck at this, so I still have to do it, <laughs> which is well, not very inspiring. <laughs> and I think, I think the other thing is, I think I've learned from both you and Mark is, know when, even though you have an opinion, it's not necessarily do you want to actually step in with that opinion or you want to let people go? So I've had a lot of instances 
think recently where I've just said, okay, it's not the way I would do it, but I'm just going to back off, let these guys make a call. Um, Cause I think the other thing is small business owners, like at least me, I'm sure Megan, you're the same way is like, you know, we are hyper-focused on the experience, you know, yes. I coach, so I stand the stem and I watch look on people's faces, their body language, and I am creating a story for them that they're dissatisfied and they're just, it's not where we be. And the coach on the floor is doing their thing. And, you know, so a lot of times, sometimes I'm right. A lot of times I'm not right. People yeah. are just have a look on their face, but I'm like, <laughs> so I think that curbing your, you know, your, um, your intention of trying to anticipate dissatisfaction with something kind of gets is frustrating for the staff as well. Yeah, I think it's really well said, Chris, especially at the moment when you're delegating. Because if you delegate someone, you know, you're, you 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 want to send the message that like I trust you. I'm picking you to do this because you are uniquely the person I've chosen, right? Like, and you're uniquely skilled and qualified to be able to learn this and get graded over time. And over time, I hope you're a ten out of ten. I hope you're better at this than me. But when you delegate and then immediately micromanage, right? And then you immediately nitpick. And you immediately give a little bit of feedback all the time about everything they do. <laughs> The person gets frozen, right? We know that when one people take on new tasks, new people at new tasks need praise, not criticism, right? So the best thing to do once you've delegated is just to find all the things they're doing right, even when they're tiny. But our impulse, and Chris, you're not alone here, we all have this impulse, is to like, but they're not doing it like I did. So I'm going to give them constant feedback about all the things that I see them doing wrong. And that's like the worst thing to do for someone who's new at a, in a task. You know, we would never do that with our clients. Right, our clients wow. come to the gym, and they could be doing this the worst, you know, hinge ever. And we're gonna be like, okay, that looks really good for all these reasons. Let's try this next. Right, we're gonna give them praise because we know they're beginners, and we know how uncomfortable it is to be a beginner. And mm -hmm. so, and oftentimes we just don't extend that same that same um, grace <laughs> uh, to our own our own staff. Yeah. So those are those are some good pitfalls. I'm trying to think if there's any uh, pitfalls I've had that you all didn't mention yet. I've had a ton myself. Well, I would say this, another another pitfall I've I've run into that I, I know I've done many times is I've delegated someone because they were the convenient choice, but not the right choice, right? Like I've given, I, I, you know, let's say I've, I wanted something, I'm trying to think of a specific example, because I know I've done this a ton of times, is, you know, let's say I want to get a task off my plate. Um, I will just give it to the first person who's like standing in the room with me at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, instead of like really thinking through like what's required, what skills or experience does the person need to have, whose plate is the fullest, like there's been plenty of times where I've been like, oh, I just really don't want to do this. That person's standing right there. Let me ask them. And it's just not the best person for the job. Uh, and so, you know, I've done that many times. And I've learned now that I, I need to, you know, go slow to go fast. That I need to slow down think through what I actually need uh, and not just, you know, hand off a task to the first person I see in the room, <laughs> which feels pretty, feels efficient, but rarely works out. I mean, I've kind of done the opposite of that where I make myself crazy trying to pick the perfect person mm. to do something that really could be done by anyone on my team. Interesting. You know, and then I end up just doing it myself because I'm like, no one can do this. <laughs> right. so. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, I think we could probably talk about fails all day, but let's move yeah. on to some positives. <laughs> let's move on to some things we've learned. Um, I'll start with you. I'll start with you, Megan, um, because I know that you've um, you've done a lot to kind of think through when you're ready to delegate. What are the steps you go through to to try and delegate? So, like, what have you learned that's really worked for you? What are some best practices? that you'd recommend to our listeners? Yeah, um, I think a best practice is to acknowledge and accept that it's not a super speedy process. Mm. Um, for me, at least, it takes time. And to just kind of accept that and know that it is going to take that work up front. So part of what I personally do is as I'm going through my week or my day, I'll start to just keep a list of things that I don't want to do anymore, things mm. that things that I think I could pay somebody, you know, maybe an administrative fee to do, because that's most of the stuff that I delegate is administrative stuff at this point. Sure. So, yeah, I start by just, as I go through my work day, keeping a list of all these things that I want to get off my plate. And then the second step is, as I'm doing these tasks, I start creating a process document, which 
I know not everyone loves process documents as much as I do. <laughs> so it, I know it's very challenging, but it doesn't have to be like some big fancy thing, as you say. And I think Brene Brown says, you know, shitty first draft, like yep. just start writing that stuff down. I keep it in Google Docs. And just as I'm doing the thing, I just keep a list, like step by step, this is how you do it. And then if I'm hiring somebody new, I have all these things already for their job description. Um, and something that I've really, really learned is just setting those expectations up front. And <clears throat> this is something that I'm still trying to get better at. And something that I've really learned just recently is that in those expectations, I like to include a little blurb like, um, you know, subject to change or <laughs> sure. um, anything else, like something else could be added. Cause that's really been a hard thing for me for some reason is when someone's already been working for me for a while and adding something new to their plate, mm. for some reason I have, um, I have a hard time with that. Yeah. So that makes sense. yeah, I think setting that expectation early that it's a possibility. I might ask you to do something else that we don't discuss right now. Yeah. That's a big lesson I've learned lately. Yeah. That's a great list. It's okay. I'm going to just repeat back for our listeners, the things I heard, cause there's like three or four great kind of tips in there. I want to make sure they write them down. One is recognizing that delegating is not a quick fix, right? And Megan said it, you said it so beautifully, right? It takes more time up front to teach someone new how to do it than just keep doing it yourself. But once yeah. you do invest that time and energy to delegate, then hopefully it's kind of off your plate forever mm -hmm. you know, or at the very least forever ish. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is so smart. I think the second thing I heard, which is a great tip, is keep a list of things you don't want to do anymore, right? For you, you said it's mostly admin stuff. Just keep that list somewhere. And then as you go to do those things, the third thing I heard was just record yourself doing them or create a process document for that. So when you do, if you do someday decide to hand it off, you already have an SOP, right? You already have a standard operating procedure. You can just hand off or collect together with other SOPs to like make a role. You know, make a role, and then whether that's a brand new role in the in the company, or you're just shifting that task to someone else, it's already done for you. So I think that's that's so smart. Oftentimes, people don't think about creating SOPs for stuff they do because it's all in their head. Right? Like, well, I know how to do it. Why write it down? Mm -hmm. it's like, well, do you want to do it forever? <laughs> <And> so <laughs> your idea here is great because you're being proactive by making the list, making the SOPs as you go. So if you do decide to to um, to pass it off. I know you and I have been talking about you wanting to pass even more things off in the near future. You're kind of ready to go. You know, it's yeah. ready to pass off. It makes it so much easier. Um, and then obviously expectation setting is huge. And I agree, like most jobs should say, you know, at the bottom should say, and anything else we put on your plate. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That's really how it works in small businesses like ours, right? It's like, this is your job and anything else I ask you to do. <laughs> right. And we'll, we can negotiate in the moment what that looks like or if it requires more pay. But you know we're not static businesses, right? We're we're changing and growing and evolving if we're going to stay alive. Yeah, um, amazing. Yeah. Those are great tips, Megan. Thank you for that. Um, what about you, Chris? I know you've also done some delegating specifically with virtual assistants. So I would love to hear like what you've been learning from that. Yeah. So that for 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 me deciding to do a virtual assistant had a couple of different challenges. The first was just all the things Megan just talked about. The second thing, this person's in Malaysia, mm -hmm. right? So we had that kind of distance. Uh, but I found out, I learned a lot about that process, which translated to the people that worked in for me. So, you know, working with you, it was, you know, I know I wanted this person to do a lot of different things. I didn't know exactly what. So I think with your advice, like task by task. Mm. And we used a, a um, tool called Loom, yep. which allowed you to kind of record yourself uh, with a screenshot. With, and so you go, so a lot of the stuff was doing through our systems, through our sales systems, through our follow-up systems. Uh, in Google Sheets, and so we just we just took one task at a time and say, okay, you are going to when a new member joins, you're going to go to the Google Sheet, and then you're going to and just take them through maybe five minutes of keystrokes. I want to go here and there, um, and just sent it to him, and I said, okay, now the next task, and then the next task, and it went really well. He picked it up quickly. I uh, asked questions. Great. Um, he totally understood kind of exactly what it was for me to write that down. It would have been like would have taken forever. Off. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, I'm just going to do it like I would do it, which is quick, record it, send it off to him and he's good to go. Um, and then we use that same method for, you know, we have, you know, 
when a new athlete joins us, they're assigned accountability coach. And that person is kind of like their Sherpa. As long as they're here, they're in charge of that person's experience. Mm. And so they need to reach out to that person once a month in some form. Um, so we have a system to track activity, how long, how, how many times they came here, what their goals are. So there was a pretty quick process that, that, that a person who is an accountability coach would need to go through. They would like check their attendance, look at their goals, see recent communications before they start talking to them. So they have a little bit of baseline. So it's not just, their, you know, hey, how you doing? This is Chris from Velocity. Hope everything is well. Doesn't mean anything. So we just took that same method. So we're delegating that process, which is a pretty um, important process to us. It's not like a, a admin task. This is really about the experience. And we allowed more coaches to do it, created these looms, delegated to them to say, this is the key strokes you need to do before you contact everybody. It should take you probably three minutes per person to do this background check and then communicate with them. So again, it was very, we use that same method of, let me show you how to do it yep. Uh, and then have you look at it. And then it's been very successful. Yeah. Good for you. I, I think this is such a huge tip for listeners, Chris, is that, is that there's not enough people using like screen recording technology, right? Something like Loom or we use Vidyard or like there's so many out there. I think even on most Macs, you can record your video just, just using a QuickTime player. We'll have, you know, a free, you know, um, screen recording feature. And I think in a two minute video where I'm just clicking through how I do something, I can share more information than I can than in the 10 page written document, <laughs> right? It's just the, the visual cues and like the verbal cues we can give when we're recording that makes such a huge difference. Yeah. So um, I'll just ask you this, Chris, because I think, you know, that's by itself a huge tip and a big takeaway. What did you learn? Are there any differences that you experienced working with delegating stuff to your team in person versus delegating to people who are remote, in your case, in Malaysia? <laughs> any major differences there that you noticed? Well, I think it's time difference. Sure. Right. <laughs> four hours difference. Um, Which is meaningful when it's task related because you sometimes has are time sensitive need to happen on a certain schedule. So being aware of that is not a small thing. Or just having him aware of when you're texting somebody, which is part of his task, because you know you are it's twelve o'clock at night. Yeah. Twelve o'clock at night. So he has to be aware of where, where, who he's talking to. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just think the the back and forth in person is a lot easier. So yeah. if someone's right here; they can look the video. And what we actually did is that we turned those vi those uh, Loom videos into links in an SOP. Mm -hmm. So it became a kind of a very short SOP with links, embedded links, to tell them how to do each step. So it made the SOPs a lot easier to write and not so yep. intense. Um, but I think just I think it was just that communication real time. Someone could see it. We can interact. Uh, and then if it's if it's if it's remote, depending on where they are, it's time differences. It's making sure. They understand the language, which has not been an issue for, for this person, for us. Great. So those are probably the major things. Yeah, I think that's huge. I think you're right that oftentimes, especially in the beginning with the virtual assistant, the time it takes to teach someone when they're not face-to-face -face just might be a little bit longer, yeah. right? depending on the task. I imagine some things are shorter, like I just sent you a Loom video and that's all it takes. Yeah. But some things just might take a little longer. There might be some translation needed, either actual language translation or some cultural translation to understand like the importance of the task. But I think that's that's all really super useful. Well, then you just remind me, and then you know, you'll find out when that that person does a task that you forgot something. Yes. Right. So it's like they're like, I forgot to tell you to check that they haven't already scheduled something because you are you reached out once, mm -hmm. you reached out again, and they've scheduled something for your directions, and now they're annoyed that you you're you're asking for the same thing again. It was something I didn't tell them to do. Okay, now we found out that I missed a step. Yeah. That's, yeah, I think that's one of the most common things I see in delegating is, right, like, I don't know what I really need you to do until I see you do it. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to give you my first draft. Here's what I think the instructions are. This is what I've been doing at least. Now you go do it. Let's see what happens. And you're like, oh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I mm -hmm. forgot this. Or in some cases, you know, just the fact that a different person is doing it will change the outcome. Right. Like, for example, if, you know, if people had been receiving texts from Chris Perry, the owner of Velocity, and suddenly they're getting it from a generic text message from the business, that might just change the context of the task. 
right? The same script you're using might not work anymore, right? Because it's not coming from you. And so there's all kinds of things that we have to be ready to tweak and adjust once we started the delegating. And so I want, let me ask you about that. So there's the moment where you decide you're ready to delegate. You actually put together an SOP. You actually train the person to do it. But then there's like the ongoing quality control and follow-up. So what, what have you been learning there? What's important once that task is technically delegated, but you know you kind of have to still stay on top of it for a while, if not forever. So what are you learning there, Megan? I'm learning that um, you ha you do have to stay on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, I have gotten lucky and I do have some people that I honestly don't have to stay on top of and it's absolutely amazing. But I think you can't take that for granted and implementing um, some kind of ongoing process like our one-on-one -on -one meetings, which I've learn from you are super important, not only for making sure people are just doing what they're supposed to be doing, but making sure that they're happy and they're, they're okay with what they're doing. Maybe they yep. have questions, things like that. So I think making sure that I stay engaged with them, you know, we, I think we would all love to think like we've delegated it. And I never have to think about it again. Yeah. That would be glorious, but you know, <laughs> At the end of the day, it is your business. So clearly we all care too much about all these things, even the teeny tiny things. So staying on top of it, it's not really, I kind of do it naturally, but I sure. think having a, um, a process like those, those ongoing meetings are kind of how I keep it, keep it together and just make sure I at least have my checkpoints at least once a month. Yeah, that's great. I think, you know, ongoing accountability for continuing to do well in a task that was delegated is so crucial. And you're right, one-on-one -on -one meetings can be like a really great way to do that, right? If we're just meeting once a month, once every other week, whatever it is, I can be asking you how it's going. You can be showing me the quality of your work. Or you can be demonstrating that you still know and understand how to do that thing. And it doesn't have to take a lot of time, but I think it's a great example. What about you, Chris? What are you, what are you, what are you uh, learning when it comes to, you know, post-delegation life? Yeah, I think one thing that I really appreciate and encourage is when people suggest a, a um, improvement to the process. Mm -hmm. So now you know you're engaged. So someone looks at, you know, you know, what if we did this instead of that, which is awesome. So one is to encourage that when it happens and then set the expectations like I want you to do this and then find a, a better way to do it. So now they own it. Um, so that's the kind of a, a learning we, we, we had. Uh, and then just to dig at Megan's point is what I find is that when you delegate something and then, you know, some people aren't going to be hundred percent compliant. It's just, it's just the nature. I'm not hundred percent compliant. So I get it, but if there's no follow-up that people learn. That's not that important because no one's asked mm -hmm. me. And I've heard all my life and business is like, if you're something, you ask somebody to do something and you stop, I just tell the stories that when I was in, you know, kind of corporate, you know, if you issued, I was in finance, if you issue reports, to all these departments, one thing we used to do, then stop issuing the reports and see if anybody asked for it. And mm -hmm. if nobody does, then nobody's reading the report. So I think people learn like, well, that was something that was important, but I missed it a couple of times and no one followed up. So I guess it's not that important. Yeah. So to cut that off is, you know, we have some times in the staff meetings where we go through that accountability. There's a log, we can see how often people have, have signed up. So finding some mechanism, as Megan says, is to make sure they know it's still important because we're asking for it. Because I think yeah. the nature is if we're not asking about it, then it must not be important anymore because we have a bunch of stuff to do. Yeah, that's really well said. So, uh, you know, as Megan shared, the meetings are one way to do that. And then you're sharing also, there's other ways to keep people accountable, having some sort of accountability chart or a thing that you go through in team meetings or some transparent way I can see the work so I can check in on it and let you know I'm checking in on it. And ideally, hopefully give some praise. Hey, I just saw that you completed five out of five days of that task. Thank you so much for your persistence and hard work. I know this is new, but it looks like you're nailing it so far. Like there's so many ways to hold people accountable. That's so great. I also want to go back to the first thing you said, um, Chris, was the idea of, you know, people are really engaged to have ownership of a task when they when they recommend tweaks. 
and mm. improvements or edits to it. And I think that's just a smart thing to look for. And frankly, a smart thing to encourage, right? To say, hey, I'm telling this to you, you seem to be able to do it really well now, so this is yours. And this being yours means I encourage you to make it better if you can, right? If there's some way you can improve this process, make it more efficient, make it cost less money, make it take less time, then like that's on you. And I'm open to that at any time. Just let me know and I'm happy to collaborate if you need me, right? Mm -hmm. But like, that's so smart. I think you all know this, but you know, we talk a ton about Zingerman's all the time <laughs> on this podcast and in, in life, <laughs> Mark and I do, <laughs> are such fans. And that's one of the, one of their kind of major tenants of for SOPs is that SOPs are kind of owned by everyone. They're owned by their manager and the, and the, the staff member. And everyone is responsible for making sure that they are up to date and they're the best they can be. If there are new ideas, then we both are responsible for making sure they get updated and integrated into how we work. And I think that's a really important kind of, if there is a final step to delegating, it's that kind of agreement that one makes with the person they delegated to. This is yours now, but we're still in partnership here. Like I'm here to help you and let's keep making this better forever and ever, <laughs> you know? And like, that's a, it's a, you know, it's a great way to tie things up. Um, speaking of tying things up, I'll ask you both one more question before we start to wrap things up here, which is, that was a good transition, huh? I'm a, I'm <laughs> Pretty good, good. I'm a good podcaster. Um, <laughs> the, the, my question is this, like, what are you still learning and wanting to get better at for yourselves when it comes to delegating? So clearly you've both done a lot of work on this. You've gotten much better at it. You've have new processes in place. There's so much that, that's going well, but where are the areas where you both are still wanting to grow and get better when it comes to delegating? I'll, I'll start with you this time, Chris. Yeah, I think it's just continue to look for things to delegate. Mm. So usually for me, you know, delegation is a result of a tipping point. Mm. I get to so overwhelmed by something that I say I have to delegate, which is more passive than I'd want to be. I want to be more actively like Megan says, what is my list of things? I think it's a good exercise for me to go through is what ultimately what are the things I don't want to do? Nothing I do it tomorrow, but have this list that I can refer and say, okay, let's get rid of this one. So it's not like, not in a crisis, but it's just not like so overwhelming. Yep. And so you can do it more kind of in a, in a process way. Um, I think that's what I would continue to work on. It's like, I should be looking like almost like I have a quarterly goal of like, let's delegate five things this quarter. Great. That's yeah. another kind of thing. So it's always a process as opposed to, I'm at such a tipping point. Now I need to delegate, which is not the best situation to be in. Sure. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. That's a great one, Chris. Just being more, having more awareness of opportunities to delegate, I think is huge. Yeah, beautifully said. Awesome. What about you, Megan? Where are the areas where you're still wanting to, to get better here? I think my biggest area I want to get better at is sort of what I mentioned before about being okay with an existing employee, an existing job description changing and mm -hmm. asking someone that has been doing the job for a year, you know, to, hey, I, I actually want you to vacuum at the end of the night, too. And honestly, that's it's really tough for me. I, I don't know what that is. It's something like I don't want to shock people, maybe, or mm -hmm. I don't want to feel like I don't ever want to feel like I don't want people to feel like I'm taking advantage of them. And um, yeah, that's a tough balance for me. But I think kind of like every year, I think we're going to take this opportunity in January to rewrite our job descriptions and have everybody kind of just read over them and sign off and adding that little blurb that you said, you know, and anything else that I decide to add to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's so smart and it makes sense that it feels a little bit tough for you because I know that, you know, just from working with you, Megan, you do such a good job of trying to set expectations for roles, right? And saying, this is your job, this is your job. And then when it needs to change, it feels like we're changing our agreement. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we are, we are renegotiating what this role is. And sometimes it's small ways and sometimes it's really big ways, right? Sometimes I really do need to take you on something else that takes a, a ton more time or capacity. Uh, and that can be challenging. Yeah, so I think it's it's a great area to keep exploring. It sounds like you know, like many things, there's both mindset mindset shifts that need to happen, and then also maybe process or skill set shifts that need to happen as well. And so, yeah, that's a good one to keep working on. Yeah, Amazing. I think you learn as you go. It's just not it's not the same thing every day. It's not the same thing every month or every mm -hmm. year. I mean, we just got through a freaking pandemic. Like everything's different, you know. Yeah. So it's just yeah, my mindset too needs to just. It, you learn so much as you go. 
Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I love you're very optimistic that we just got through a pandemic. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> yeah, almost, I guess. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's amazing. Um, um, well, thank you for doing this, friends. I'm sure we could probably keep talking about delegating forever, but I think we covered some really great ground here. And I feel like, you know, I hope listeners, you feel like you got some great takeaways from this. Um, I love that this conversation was so kind of focused on a single topic. And I feel, I feel like it allowed us to do kind of a deeper dive. Um, and I love that we got perspectives from both of you. So I really appreciate it. Um, as we as we wrap up, I would love just for you all to just share um, with our listeners, if they want to know more about Follow You or your businesses, where do they find you, Chris? Where do they find you or Velocity online? Yeah, I would just say uh, Instagram is VSP Norwood. Uh, mm -hmm. Find us there. Um, and um, that's it. Great. Yeah, go follow them on Instagram, VSP Norwood. I love that. And what about you, Megan? Yeah, our Instagram is Heat Raleigh. Um, and our website is heatstudios.com. We're pretty active on Instagram, so you can kind of see everything that goes on inside of the gym on there. And if you ever want to message us, we're pretty good on our DMs. So I'd love to see some new faces. Yeah, I love that. And listeners, I can tell you from experience working with these two that, you know, Chris and Megan are very generous, open-hearted, transparent business owners. So I imagine if you want to DM them with any follow-up questions from today's conversation, um, they will be, you know, quick with some tips and advice. Um, so thank you, my friends, for doing this. And for listeners, just a reminder, please share, comment, subscribe, share this podcast. If there's any people in your business or friends or colleagues that own fitness businesses that you think would benefit from today's conversation, just go send it to them. We'd be happy to, to meet some more, more of your friends. <laughs> um, but thanks again, Chris and Megan, for doing this. I appreciate you both. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'm sure we'll be talking soon. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye. Bye. Hey friends, before you go, just one more thing. Um, if you enjoy this podcast, you get value out of it, you enjoy listening, please share this podcast, comment below. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. Um, please share it with friends and family. We don't spend any money on marketing or advertising. And so um, so the only way people find out about this podcast is from you. So please do everything you can to share it with friends and uh, fellow colleagues in the fitness industry. Uh, we love making it and we want to keep doing it for a long, long time. So I appreciate your support. Go have a kick-ass day. Bye.